Remote User Authentication Using Needham and Schroeder Encryption Protocol Needham and Schroeder Symmetric Key Protocol Uses symmetric algorithm encryption To provide confidentiality for communication with involvement of the use of a trusted key distribution center KDC Each group in the network shares a secret key, known as Master Key with KDC KDC function is to generate limited time keys for a connection between two groups, known as session keys. Session keys are protected by master keys during distribution. The process of Needham and Schroeder using KDC. This is a simple understanding process of how connection is done with KDC. First, Alice wants to send a message to Bob. To do that, Alice must send her secret key to KDC to generate a session key for Alice. KDC will also do the same for Bob's secret key by generating a session key for him too. Once both Alice and Bob have their session keys, verified, and then they can start their communication. Next, explanation of Needham and Schroeder using KDC without time stamp. Step 1. Alice sends her identity and Bob's identity with her nonce to KDC. Step 2, KDC then generate a session key and sends an encrypted session keys to Alice. Next, for encryption of session key, KDC generates session key and then encrypt it with Alice's secret key. This process also does the same for Bob's secret key. Step 3, Alice sends encrypted session key to Bob where Bob can decrypt it using his own secret key. Step 4, when Bob recovers session key then reply nonce which encrypted with session key to Alice. Step 5, Alice confirms Bob's session key and then send back a fresh message to Bob. Step 4 and 5 are vulnerable to replay attack. An opponent, X attacker has been compromised an old session key. X has observed and recorded step 3. X can then impersonate Alice and trick Bob into using old key by replaying step 3. If X can intercept the handshake message in step 4, then it can impersonate Alice's response in step 5. X can then send false messages to Bob, which Bob thinks it comes from Alice using an authenticated session key. Explanation of Needham and Schroeder using KDC with timestamp. To overcome the vulnerability of this protocol, is to apply the Denning protocol which is applying a timestamp to step 2 and step 3. The timestamp can assure the session key of Alice and Bob has only just been generated. Both Alice and Bob know that the key distribution is a fresh exchange. Alice and Bob can verify timeliness using a time checking formula. Next, timestamp is encrypted using the secure master keys where no opponent or attacker even with knowledge of old session key, cannot succeed because a replay of step 3 will be detected by Bob as untimely. Where T1 is the estimated normal discrepancy between the KDC's clock and the local clock, at Alice or Bob. Next, T2 is the expected network delay time. Each node can set its clock against some standard reference source. Improved Denning Protocol New scheme requires reliance on clocks that are synchronized throughout the network. Risk, distributed clocks can become unsynchronized as a result of sabotage on or faults in the clocks or the synchronization mechanism, attack, suppress replay attack. One way to avoid suppress replay attack, is to enforce the requirement that parties regularly check their clocks against the KDC's clock. Step 1 Alice initiates the authentication exchange by generating a nonce, and sending that with its identifier to Bob in plain text. This nonce will be returned to Alice in an encrypted message that includes the session key, assuring Alice of its timeliness. Step 2, Bob alerts the KDC that a session key is needed. Its message to the KDC includes its identifier and a nonce. This nonce will be returned to Bob in an encrypted message that includes the session key, assuring Bob of its timeliness. Bob's message to the KDC also includes a block encrypted with the secret key shared by Bob and the KDC. This block is used to instruct the KDC to issue credentials to Alice, 
the block specifies the intended recipient of the credentials, a suggested expiration time for the credentials, and the nonce received from Alice. Step 3 The KDC passes on to Alice Bob's nonce and a block encrypted with the secret key that Bob shares with the KDC. The block serves as a ticket that can be used by Alice for subsequent authentications, as will be seen. The KDC also sends to Alice a block encrypted with the secret key shared by Alice and the KDC. This block verifies that Bob has received Alice's initial message and that this is a timely message and not a replay, and it provides Alice with a session key and the time limit on its use. Step 4, Alice transmits the ticket to Bob, together with the Bob's nonce, the latter encrypted with the session key. The ticket provides Bob with a secret key that is used to decrypt to recover the nonce. The fact that Bob's nonce is encrypted with the session key authenticates that the message came from Alice and is not a replay. A session is established with secure session key from Alice and Bob. The protocol leaves Alice in possession of a key that can be used for subsequent authentication to Bob, avoiding multiple times contact to the authentication server. For Alice and Bob to establish a session using aforementioned protocol and then conclude that session. But within a limited period of time established by the protocol, Alice desires a new session with Bob. Step 1 When Bob receives the message in Step 1, it verifies that the ticket has not expired. Step 2 Next, the newly generated nonces and NB assure each party that there is no replay attack. Step 3, the time specified in TB is a time relative to Bob's clock. Thus, this time stamp does not require synchronized clocks, because Bob checks only self-generated time stamps. The End